Hi guys, welcome to LR Live UK and in today's episode we are going to be fitting this Mantec Swingaway wheel carrier onto our Project 110 Defender. Now, if you missed it on a previous episode, we actually fitted a gas assist strut on the inside here of the vehicle, um, which actually enables the door to open by itself. So you've got a simple, easy opening there, and then it's assisted, and then it breaks uh, at the end. Now, the reason I fitted that mostly was because I knew we were gonna be fitting a swing away wheel carrier, and I wanted to see how well it performed with both. So if you missed it, I'll put a link up now, and you can go and check that out later or now if you want. Now, if you're watching this video as soon as it's been published, um, we've actually currently got a discount code running uh, for 10% off, which is YT10. If you uh, actually enter that checkout on lrparts.net, you'll get 10% off. So that could be a great time to buy one of these because you'll be getting 10% off, but it only lasts a few more days. So if you're looking at getting one of these, uh, see what you think when we've got it finished. And if you like what you see, there's a link below and you can click on there and get uh, a discount. Now, out of the box, there's only a few elements to this whole swing away wheel carrier. You've got the main cradle itself, you've got the mounting plate that goes on the back door, and that's really one of the reasons why I haven't painted or treated the back door, because although it is a bit rusty, most of that is from the previous wheel, well, all of it's from the previous wheel carrier, because it's obviously aluminium, so touching that up is probably not something I'm going to do at the moment. We'll wait until we do a full refurb on the truck, but this will actually cover that up because it goes on the outside of the vehicle. So that's going to tidy that up nicely. And then obviously the only other things we've got are the brackets. So we've got two mounting brackets, one upper and one lower. Uh, pretty simple stuff. Uh, and these should work really well with our Exmoor trim hinges as well because we've got a little bit more clearance. Um, you've obviously got your bushings for the swing away carrier itself. You've got the uh, plunger, which basically um, controls the movement of the swing away so it doesn't put stress on some of the fixings and the uh, connections. You've got a nice sticker in there and you've got all the fixings you need. So it should be quite an easy job once we know exactly what's going on. Now, the instructions don't come in the box. You have to go online to get those. So I'll print a copy of that out and we'll have a look at what we're doing. Okay, so you need to download the instructions online and uh, you can get that on the Mantec website. I'll put a link on the screen now for you. Um, and you can see really, it's quite a simple process. So you've got the plate on the door. You've got the two hinges that should use existing fixing points, although we might have to drill them out. I'm pretty sure we'll have to drill them out a little bit, but at least the hold, the pilot's going to be there. And then it's just a case of assembling it like a Meccano kit. So the first thing I want to show you is this plate. Now it's got a lot of holes in this plate. So you can see you've got these, which correspond to my older door, uh, and they just will mount in position straight over the top. Um, if you've got a newer vehicle, so if you've got a newer TD5 or a Puma, you're going to find that the, you're going to have these holes because the plate mounting plate's different that you're going to be removing. So the eventuality is all the holes will be there for you to suit your vehicle. So I've got all my nuts and bolts and fixings in this uh, magnetic tray so I don't lose any of them. And although these holes are in the right position for the plate, we do have to drill them out to 8 mil. Okay, so we've got those through, and then we're just on the back. So yeah, try and get your washers in there if you can. And when they're in, once they're in place, we can get those tightened up. So I'm just gonna try and use this driver to make the job a bit easier for me, a bit quicker. And I'll torque them up in a second. Now, when you get all the fixings for the uh, swing away wheel carrier, you're going to not have enough to use all new fixings. Um, they do ask you to use your existing fixings, um, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to use new ones. So I'd recommend just heading out to uh, your local hardware store and get yourself some M8 uh, nuts and bolts and washers just so you can fit all new fixings on there and do a nicer job. Let's get the piston in place. So obvious where it goes mantex on there so obviously that's uh, the correct way around but obviously we want the piston to be on the left hand side of the vehicle and just simply washers and nuts now you don't want to do this up too tight straight away because it does have some movement and that's to allow everything to sort of line up nicely when you've got your brackets and your arm on there so just get these nipped up I've still got some movement in there so I can make the adjustments. For the upper bracket, it's actually asking us to remove uh, the two rivets here, but we've only got one. Um, so don't remove these two if you've only got three on this rear capping. Basically, we're going to be drilling out this rivet. 
and then we'll use the bracket once it's fitted to pilot another hole. Now you're going to need an 11 mil drill bit uh, for those, so you can fit some uh, M10 bolts. So to make life a little bit easier, I'm going to step this, I'm going to use a, an 8 first. Now obviously if you've got any interior trim, make sure you remove that first, which I've done on the inside so you don't damage it when you're drilling through. So we now need to go a little bit bigger on that one, up to an 11. Try and get the bracket central, I can then make sure it's level, just going to do a little Mark a pilot hole. So once again, we'll step it. So you've got a steel capping here, so that's a little bit tougher. And then we'll go through with the 11. Right, so this is the plate we need to uh, put on the inside of the upper bracket. And I've got my thread lock in there again, so I'm gonna pass that to my not so glamorous assistant, Steve, ah, now. We've on. lost that accolade. And again, we're not going to do it up tight because we need to allow some movement on that. Right, so you can see there, we've got a nice straight level bracket and we've got that adjustment there. Uh, this has had a new rear cross member on it and you may on yours have uh, one of the old handles. So you need to remove that and discard it if you've got it in place. And the two holes that we're looking for to use are these two here, which will correspond with my um, captive plate there that goes on the back and actually the lower bracket and you can see these are offset and they line up on there and then you've got the additional mounting points there. Now because this is a captive plate we're going to use some thread lock because we don't have a nylock nut so I'm just going to again use my chapstick. Uh, I do like to show this off because it's a great bit of kit but if you haven't got this it's worth getting it's much easier than the liquid it doesn't go everywhere and it stays in place look so I can get that offered up and it's got the thread lock in there already for me. Now it's a little bit tricky, um, but you can get your fingers in there. So there's a plate on the back of the cross member. So it's not super easy, but if you actually get the plate in there and hold it here, you can get it into position. So you slide it in there. And again, that's why that thread lock's good. And you can just see there, look. So I just need to get that lined up. And we're in. And there we are. So that's in plate. We can now nip that up. It's nice and easy. You can do it from the outside. All these are slotted so that we can get a square uh, fitment. Everything needs to be lined up square. So I'll just back that off slightly. And that's how we want it. So We've got some movement and then we'll look at now fitting the next piece. So again, we've got another captive plate for this side of the bracket. The holes are already in place and this is a little bit easier to get to. So just simply again, offer it up from the back. Now you should be able to just slot this captive plate into your rear cross member. Um, but if you, like me, you've got a replacement rear cross member, the tolerances might be slightly different. And I've got on the inside, there's a plate that's got a bead of weld. Uh, running down there which is preventing this captive plate from actually sitting close enough to line up in the holes so I'm going to have to use some uh, nylock nuts at the back there instead. Now it's a shame admittedly but you know at the end of the day because these Land Rovers are old most of them are going to have a new rear um, cross member fitted. If you've gone for a full chassis you might be in more luck because if you've gone for um, you know a galve chassis that's to spec it should slot in perfectly. That's one. I've got it pressed up against the inside face, slide it into position, and then we are good to go. Okay, so it's probably a little bit easier if I just quickly show you how everything is assembled inside the carrier itself. So you've got your, uh, your long bolt with your washer here, then you have your nylon uh, bush with the flange at the top, and at the bottom you're going to need one of your penny washers. Now you might need two of these depending on how tight the tolerance is. Um, you can see there we've probably got room for another. So you put another washer in there, you get four in the kit. Yeah. 
and there we go so that's how it's going to go with obviously the wheel carrier now in place so i'll get um rigged up and show you how that all goes together so we're gonna have to actually insert these nylon bushes into the cradle itself so should just be a nice easy fit now i don't know how easy they're going to be let's have a look i suppose you could put some grease on these What a nice fit, there you go, that is perfect. So you could use a nylon hammer, but look, that's a nice, that goes in a tree. Okay, so lifting your bolts out, and remember all these are loose. So I'm just gonna pop it in place first. Now I think, got one in. Top one in, bottom one in. So we're in place. Now let's get our penny washers in there. So I'm just lifting it up slightly. Try not to damage your finish when you're pushing those brackets in. And then we'll just take a bit of pressure off this one, lift it up, try and slide these washers. Now, yeah, I'll get two in there. There we go. So I've got my cradle in place. I've got my nuts and my washers on the uh, actual brackets themselves. Now I haven't attached the cradle to the door yet because what you can do is obviously with that piston, you can't offer it up while it's in the closed position, but when it's open and the, uh, the actual hydraulic piece is not extended, we can close the door and actually do that up. Now just to try and make this a little bit clearer, so obviously when you open your door, you'll see the piston retracts if it's not got a nut on it, um, but it will hold in place. So to get this located, uh, we actually close, open the door, put your carrier on and then just close the door and then it'll poke through. So when we've got that, and don't forget we're all loose still, so it's gonna jiggle about. We'll get our washer, our first fixing nut. The reason you've got a locking nut is because obviously with the piston in there, it's just going to keep spinning. So that's why you need to have a locking nut against it. Okay. So I've got the door fully open. Just going to do this up as much as I can. It should catch against the rubber washer and not spin too much. I'm doing it like that so I'm actually getting it to ratchet round and you can see the if I just do it like that the actual um, threaded piece is moving but if I do the drop down and knock it tight the shaft doesn't move as much so we're nice and tight there I don't know if you can see this but what we've actually got here is this plate behind here is perfectly level with the arm here, which means we've got the whole wheel carry it on perfectly straight. So I'm really pleased with that. It looks really nice and tidy. I know that's obviously gonna be covered up, um, but yeah, looking good. It's got some good use on this, uh, this build. So I'm gonna put some thread lock on there, on the actual um, threaded bar itself. Then just thread this on here. I've not got my adjustable spanner with me today, unfortunately, so I'm going to just try and use these uh, vice grips just to grab that one there. Tighten that locking nut as best I can. Just have to remember to do this again. Oh, that's tight as anything. Right. And I've got thread lock on there, so that's all good to go. So I'm pretty sure now it's just a case of tightening up everything before we put the wheel on. We'll just finish off these brackets with some protectors. Looks a lot tidier like that. 
Well, that was a really easy fit to put the swing away wheel carrier on the vehicle. It's nice that the brackets all go to existing fixing points on the vehicle. It's just a bit of drilling. So key things to make sure you've got is obviously an 11 mil drill bit, um, the six, sorry, the eight mil drill bit that we needed to actually fit those additional M6 bolts that we had. So as I said before in the video, um, it does recommend that you use the existing bolts to fit that plate onto the door. Um, I wasn't that happy with that because the holes in the plate were large than the holes that were in the door because the fixings I had originally were quite small. Um, so I basically just opted to fit all new fixing bolts. So get yourself to a hardware store, get a whole spare bundle of uh, M8 um, bolts, nuts, fixings, washers, whatever, um, and make sure that you've uh, got a whole complement of those nuts and bolts so you can do a nice job and get everything nice and new on there. Um, apart from that, as I said before, really make sure that you have everything loose um, when you sort of finish the assembly because you can put too much strain on that uh, piston and if it's offline slightly because the um, whole assembly has been fitted skew with, um, it could break. So the, the idea is get everything to sort of settle, be loose, get it in place, and then once it's all in place you can just tighten it up nicely and the job's done so yeah hopefully you've enjoyed the video if you have please do subscribe and give me a thumbs up be great and uh, don't forget if you're watching this straight away as soon as it's published you've got a couple of days more to benefit from the 10% uh, discount code you can go to lrparts.net enter the code yt10 at checkout and that'll give you 10% off anything that you want um, so yeah don't hang about, that's only going to be there for a few more days. But uh, for now, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you on the next one.